Gary Dordain's career has been filled with joy and a bit of pain. Dordain's most enduring role was as cast member of the original CSI series, which debuted in October of 2000. Well, he played analyst Warwick Brown, but these days, Gary is part of a great ensemble cast for the new movie, Redemption Day, and he is here to tell us all about it. Say hi to Gary Dordain. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Hollywood Live. My guest today was one of the original cast members on CSI's Crime Scene Investigation. Yep, you remember him, Warwick. Yep, Gary Gordon. That's what I'm talking about. And he's here with me today because he's got a new movie and we're going to talk all about it. Hey, Gary, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So Where are you now? I'm in Los Angeles. You're in LA, okay. We got I'm LA. in LA, in so New York so far. All right. Yeah, so you you guys are getting a big storm there, and we're getting some wind and sunshine. Sorry, <laughs> so, but we're doing good. How are you and the family do, yeah, doing? Yeah, so nice sunshiny. Yeah, how are you doing during this quarantine period here? Everyone's well. I've been actually doing a bit of traveling. I had to do a film in uh, Morocco, and then I was shooting in Los Angeles. So, you know, it is what it is. You just get through it. You just do the best you can. You, you quarantine. I've been testing all the time, every, every, every 24 hours for the production. <laughs> it is a, uh, you know, it's, well, it's, hey, it's a new challenge, the, the life of 2020. Isn't it? Well, okay, so Redemption, which is the movie that you shot in Morocco, I was wondering, I'm like, when did they do this? So you've just finished this up? We, no, this is another film I did in Morocco just recently. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. We, we, we did it uh, almost a year and a half ago, two years ago. Okay, that's what I figured. I said this had to have been done before uh, quarantine. Quite an interesting But I was movie. just there with the same production. Yeah, thank you. I was just there with the same production, different director for another project uh, about a month ago. Oh, okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about redemption, and then I want to go back to the to the early days. Um, so this movie is certainly action thriller type with an incredible cast. I mean, you and Ernie Hudson, and who else is on here? You got um, some of my favorite. Oh, Andy Garcia and yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Serena Swan. Yeah, right. Yeah, so tell yeah, us a little yeah. bit about the the movie. Never. Mm -hmm. Well, it was uh, it was fantastic. First of all, shooting in Morocco, it's like another character. It's it's so majestic, so uh, so much culture and uh, so many artisans. And you could throw a camera up in the sky and not get a bad shot in Morocco. So that's first of all, it's a fantastic location to work at. Um, the, the craft service is great there because they serve you like dates and mint tea and nuts. Um, <laughs> the the cast was equally as 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 uh great to work around uh, fantastic working with andy garcia and surinda swan and uh, uh robert nepper was also in the cast martin donovan uh, and also a cast of uh some really great moroccan actors and uh algerian actors that i got to play across from mm -hmm. and uh also our, our 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 villain was fantastic he's french algerian uh, so I, I got a, uh, I had a great uh, an opportunity to a few months before, uh, three or four months before, get into the role and, and start training with uh, with fight choreographers, and um, and uh, then later on start training with the firearms and and for the war scenes, and start speaking and calling up Navy SEAL buddies of mine um, for different uh, techniques that I would use on film to play a soldier. Someone had, had been doing this for such a long time, so you want it to look fluid. Uh, you don't want to look like you're just figuring out what to do with, with a gun, you know? So <laughs> that was interesting. The fight scenes, the fight choreography that took, uh, that took a lot of training to, to get up to a certain level, it's, it's looking fluid. And then, uh, and then the, the cold started to hit the places in Morocco where we were uh, filming in Wazazat and mm. uh, some places in, in Rabat and some places way out in, in the desert mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Meknes. 
it's just a beautiful place to be. But you know, the desert is a is a is a is a challenging challenging place because in the in the daytime it can get very warm, and at night it gets super 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 cold. Yeah. So you have to be prepared. But um, the director Hicham Aziz, he was great to work with. Very vocal and and uh, very gregarious. And it was, uh, it was a good challenge. I had a good time it, on that it, film. It looked challenging. I mean, just from, from what I've seen. And, um, you know, it, it's really kind of interesting because it's going to be shown in theaters. Of course, there's, you know, a whole new world that we're living in. But this actually does come out in theaters uh, in January. So that's a good thing as well. And now it will be right. streaming at the same time. As, how's that working? Well, uh, that's the question that you really can't ask me because I'm still trying to figure it all out. You know, this is a new, <laughs> this is a new, <laughs> this is a new day. You know, uh, I just try to do my best, put it in the can, and and let the production worry about how they're going to figure out the ways that, around theaters being closed, um, some theaters in some cities being open. Probably Atlanta, I imagine they may be open. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but the rest of the country is still struggling with when they're going to open and things of that nature. So I don't really know exactly how that's going to work, but I understand that they're going to be streaming it on all platforms. Yeah, uh, I'm just waiting for the word to to know exactly what platforms they are going to be and at what time. Well, you know, a long time ago, before we had all these platforms and a pandemic and all of that, you kind of got your 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 first real big break from Debbie Allen on a different world. That's right. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people remember you from that, by the way. Think back they on those days. They still show repeats, I think, yeah. Yeah, they do. That's the other part of it. We can all see this stuff. Uh, what was what was that like back in those days when you were first starting out? And, and I know you and Debbie have maintained a relationship over the years. Yeah, that's a, a beautiful part uh, about this industry when you can continue to uh, have relationships with people that you started out with. Well, honestly... I say it all the time, I just said it in a post recently, that she raises the bar very high for every production that I work on. And um, she just, she, she's just a force of nature to work around, to work for, and to, she's like family when, you, when, you, when you've known her for a while. Uh, and she brings everyone into the fold. She's, she's very giving, very giving. And that taught me a lot about this industry and about how to be. Mm -hmm. So any production or any one that's a little less than that, I just really don't have the patience or the time because we can do this, this job with a lot of grace and a lot of uh, beauty and a lot of giving. Uh, and it, it could be a great community. And she's, she's proven that. So I take that with me every day. Yeah. And it's fantastic to, to have my first job work, uh, working in the industry around women of color at powerful positions as director, producers, Carsey Werner, Jewish women, black women working together, um, Nicole Brown, uh, Debbie Allen, uh, Susan Fales. It was fantastic for me as my first, I was doing theater and music in New York before that. And to come out to Hollywood, my first gig and to see it going down like that was, was fantastic. And every other job <laughs> was a disappointment because I didn't see that as much. <laughs> you see it more now, but at that time, right. they were like the only women doing that. They were the pioneers yeah. of that. And it was fantastic. You and know, now yeah. I see it now when I got to work with Mara, uh, Brock Akil, and I get to work every now and then when the, the production that I've just gotten off of, uh, or just gotten on, I should say, uh, First Wives Club, I'm, I'm working with uh, black female directors, black female producers. Now I'm like, yeah, this is more like it. But for 20, 30 years, I had to not work around that. Let's just say that. So that was, uh, that was, I had a disappointing few years, you know, when I'm pushing for that, when I'm opening my mouth and I'm trying to right. be vocal about wanting to see that more. And then I became kind of, uh, you know, known for that and maybe even ostracized in certain communities because I wouldn't shut up about it. So it's good uh, yeah. to see it more common now. That is so true. And, I, and I'm so glad you have an appreciation for all of the, the Black women and women of color, really, that have held up this industry for so long and really not gotten that kind of credit that they deserve for that. And, you know, another thing, it's interesting, Gary, too, that when you do become vocal, I mean, we all know that you went through kind of a rough patch, um, mm -hmm. but you got through it. Um, oh, yeah. 
and and that's just part of life first of all and it's also certainly a part of this industry what would you say to people who go through rough patches you know and and have some some downfalls how do you get back up well the best part about it is in my line of work you can't swing a cat without hitting an actor or a director or a producer who's gone through a rough patch and who's hit the wall or maybe hit rock bottom and has had to scrape his way back up. I think the difference is in our community and the African-American community and people of color and people of uh, ethnic descent, melanated folks, and it's more difficult to do that, but it's not impossible. I think uh, we have to lose the double standards that exist within the industry and recognize that it is a small community, but we are a community and we need to look out for helping people who do, do go through rough patches, offering our shoulder, yeah. our couch, our advice, because people are going to go through it. It's a difficult industry. It's, uh, it doesn't come without its misgivings, just working around the, the industry or people who, who are difficult to work with. And you, you trying to figure out if that's actually what you want to do. And you can be around some low frequency people and have to, 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 to get through it, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not an impossible thing. Um, but I, I, I definitely tell people to just don't quit, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm very, 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 very fortunate. And I have a strong sense of spiritual grounding in my life. And I have great family to, to count on. A lot of people don't have that. And a lot of people don't make it out the other end. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people hit rock bottom and decide that's it for them. And there's a lot of people who are very successful who we would never think that have problems with uh, either substances or mm -hmm. manic depression but they do. And um, it's, it's up to us to, to be non-judgmental and to, to recognize that we're all human beings on the journey. Do you think that the pandemic may actually help us with some of that when we come out on the other side of this? Do you think that people just might all of a sudden think, you know what, love is always gonna be better than hate and dissension and, and just lifting people up? I mean, that's what I'm hoping for. Maybe that's- I would hope. Way. Yeah. I mean, during the election, it would it, it was probably very telling, very mm -hmm. eye opening that people maybe don't have that sort of attitude. Uh, they have some singular notions of, of what, the, especially in America, what it means to to have uh, liberty and freedom and, and to, to, to have a, a just system. And we're all right. struggling for these kinds of things right now. Uh, so I'm not. I'm an optimist, but I'm a realist at the mm. same time. So we don't you see. Know, you, you, well, we, we sure will, because we will get through this and on the other side, because, yay, they got a vaccine. Sure. And yes, I'm going to take it um, <laughs> whenever, whenever it's available. Uh, one last question. I know that you, uh, you have a musical background, kind of came from a musical family uh, there in Philadelphia. So what's in your playlist these days? Wow, so much good music. That's the one thing about the, the, the pandemic and the coronation that's been good about 2020 is that there has been a great deal of artists putting out music. I, mm -hmm. I guess they figured let, this is the time that they always needed to stay in the studio. I've spoken to a few artists that said that, that this was the kind of time that they have never had because they've always been touring. Uh, I am listening to such a great deal of, of, of music right now. It's Christian Scott on the jazz end. Uh, there's there's uh, Feral Monks is working on uh, putting out a new album. He just came out with a single. I listen to hip hop. I listen to jazz. Robert Glasper has not not been shy about putting out good music. He yeah. just released a track with her and with Michelle and Deglio Cello. Fabulous. Uh, there's some fantastic music on the rock end. There's Jack White has, has been doing some stuff with uh, Daru and um, uh, Machado on guitar. This has been such fantastic music coming out and I've been just gobbling it up. Mm -hmm. um, let me see who else. Um, uh, Somi has a great jazz album that's out as well. I, I looked okay. at her for some really good jazz cuts. Um, of course, my tried and true, Jill Scott, Erica Badu. <laughs> There's so yeah. many artists that I am just absolutely in love with their music. Myra Andrade from uh, Cape Verde, I listen to her a lot. This is music that I listen to when it, you just have to get through the day. And of course, yeah. I have my, my classic, my classic playlist is always there, you know, yeah. the miles, the, 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 the stuff. 
that I grew up with listening to in Philadelphia because my father was such a jazz head and an agent for a lot of musicians. Right, so exactly. There's, a, there's the, the constant jazz to, to, to Philly Joe Jones, the Lee Morgans, the, you know, all of that good stuff that I constantly listen to. But this new music has been getting into my, my playlist because it's just coming out. So uh, Ben Williams on bass, he's coming out with a fantastic album that's a mix between jazz and like Marvin Gaye. I, I would definitely go to 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 uh down, download his music. It sounds There's like you could be a music, music critic. It sounds like you could be a good music critic. <laughs> you got another oh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't a... call myself a critic because I'd hate <laughs> to critique some of these artists that just play so fabulously. I'd probably just call myself a good DJ. Yeah, well there you, know, you go. <laughs> check out my playlist, but I wouldn't try to critique them, you know. Well, it sounds good. We know that you've got another career just in case for some reason this one doesn't exactly. work out. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could DJ your bar mitzvahs. There you go. <laughs> Gary, it's always so good to see you. Thank you for taking the time because I know you're Thank busy you and we just wanted everybody to know about Redemption, uh, which mm. is coming out in January. I actually think the date is January 12th at least. January. Oh, January. Yeah, I've heard 8th, but um, you might be right about the 12th. We'll yeah, so, somewhere in the first two weeks of January. Everybody can check out Redemption. Great movie. Wherever it is streaming, you got to see it. And, and Gary, we're just always glad to see you and glad that you're back doing what you do so well. Awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Good to see you. Take care. Good Happy New Year. Blessings. Happy New Year.